Hello everyone and thank you for joining our session. We're going to be talking today about adversary in the middle attacks, how they work, uh, what it looks like for the user, how we detect them and how we respond to them. And finally, we'll go into a little bit about how Microsoft Security Copilot can help. I'm Mark Jones and I'm head of cybersecurity at Chorus. Chorus are a UK based managed cybersecurity provider um, and we basically provide all kinds of managed security offerings on the Microsoft uh, Defender toolset. We have a UK based 24 7 CSOC uh, and we are members of the Microsoft Intelligence Security Association or MISA uh, and we also have several Microsoft verified MXDR solutions. So let's jump into it. What is adversary in the middle? Adversary in the middle is a means to achieve business email compromise. Uh, typically, it's in the form of a phishing attack. And for the user, they're going to think they're providing their credentials to a service, in this case, Microsoft 365, but really it's being replayed through the attacker's machine. And the attacker is looking to intercept their session cookie um, and then import that into a browser themselves and they can log in as that user. Now this gets around controls like MFA. So even if an account is MFA protected, um, this, will this will still work. As long as you have the session cookies and you can import that into the browser, um, you can access as that user after MFA. And we see this uh, with increasing frequency for the last few months um, across multiple customers. So if we have a look at the visual on the page, you can see a user visits an attacker created phishing page. And really the user thinks that they're just authenticated in Microsoft 365, but really the attacker is initiating the authentication session with Microsoft. Um, and eventually they'll be able to intercept the username and the password if it's provided, but most importantly, the session cookie, which as we say, can then be imported somewhere else um, and used as, as that user basically. Uh, and then typically after they achieve access, that access is only as valid as long as the session cookie is, normally a couple of hours, we'll see them very quickly try and re-register another MFA method um, and perhaps set up some malicious inbox rules, etc., to make sure that they have persistence. So let's jump into a demo uh, and we can show you how this works, what it looks like from the attacker side um, and what it looks like to the user receiving the link. So to go over my demo here, I have a couple of machines set up. The first one is going to be our victims machine. Um, and you can see that this machine is based in London. The second machine is going to be our attackers machine, which is based in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I also have this uh, Linux box here. Uh, with EvilGenX running. Now there are several pre-built tools to conduct these kinds of attacks with. Uh, Modlishka is another example. Um, it's very simple. There's not a lot of con configuration that's required. Um, and these tools actually automate a lot of the process. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you what it looks like to set up this attack from the attacker side. Um, I've already bought a domain here, which is your name company. Um, everyone's familiar with typo squatting. If you imagine uh, someone was able to buy a, a domain that's similar to your organization's domain, it's probably not going to cost them uh, a lot of money. And that's really all they need to do to, uh, to set off these kinds of attacks. So first of all, uh, we have our config set up, the IP address of this box, uh, and I've already enabled Office 365. So first thing to do is create our phishing link. So we're going to create one for Office 365. get that URL. So you can see here I've set this up. Uh, we have your name company.co.uk uh, and I've tried to obfuscate the fact that this is not a legitimate Microsoft domain by hiding it behind uh, kind of names users would expect around Microsoft 365 services. So we have login.microsoft365outlook.yournamecompany.co.uk um, and we're going to set up some TLS certs with Let's Encrypt. So again, it looks very convincing to the end user. The other thing we can do is take this link and shorten it. So if, for example, we find a URL shortener, we'll just take the first one here. 
let me shorten this thing. There we go. We could put that into some kind of email, which I have done. So if we go across to our user, you can see we're logged in as this MFA user um, in our demo tenant. Um, and we can see that I've received a malicious email here from a user pretending to be SharePoint Online. Um, and that some kind of folders being uh, shared with someone. So if someone was to accept that link, it's going to go to that shortened URL. Um, and we'll see what looks to be a very legitimate looking uh, login page. So if you're eagle eyed, you, you can tell from the URL bar up here, things aren't quite what they seem. Um, it has the same link that we just set up on our um, box, uh, which is login.microsoft365 office outlook.yourname company.co.uk. And you can also see the connection is secure. Uh, the padlock that users are used to looking out for is there. Um, this looks very convincing and is easy for a user to slip up and um, consent. Also, protections like MFA aren't necessarily going to be that useful here. Um, so our MFA user has already answered MFA this morning, probably when they started work. Um, so they've already provided MFA. Um, they're not going to be asked to provide MFA again because it's within the time, uh, but we can sign in. And that would go straight through uh, and it redirects to office.com. So we haven't ended up at SharePoint like the user was expecting, um, and they might not be aware that anything's happened there, um, but that's all we needed to capture their um, session cookies and log in as that user. So if we go back to our attacker box now, we'll just close that down, jump this one up, and you can see here we've got a message saying all authorization tokens are intercepted. So if I have a look at the session. Uh, this is this huge section of text here is is the good stuff. This is what we're looking for. And th these are the the cookies that we need to import um, to log in as that user. I don't have the username. I don't have the password. Um, if it was if it was set up slightly differently, if they hadn't already authenticated to Office 365, perhaps I get that. Um, I don't really need the username or the password. Uh, I, all I need is, is this. Um, is this authorization token and, and the cookies here. So next step is to import these into a browser. So from my attacker box that was based in Johannesburg, uh, I'm going to go to just Office 365 and I'm just going to use a cookie editor to import these cookies uh, and we'll pick up when I've imported the last one. Uh, and now I'm going to import the last cookie I need, which is the silent state cookie. So we'll just come back over to cookie editor. Sign in state cookie. Save that. Uh, you can see I'm not authenticated at the moment. Let's hit a refresh. Now we've imported those session cookies. Um, and I didn't know the username or the password for this user. I don't have MFA for this user. Uh, and I'm logged in as them from my box in Johannesburg. So if I just confirm uh, I have the MFA user uh, and the first thing I'm going to want to do if I'm an attacker is register some kind of um, some kind of uh, alternative uh, MFA. Um, this means I have persistence. I can get in once this session's invalid. Uh, so let's set that up to show you what it would look like. Okay, so I've added uh, my own Microsoft Authenticator app. The other thing I might want to do is uh, log into Outlook for this um, user, um, and I might want to set up um, some kind of malicious inbox rule. So maybe I'd want to forward all mail for this user to my own mailbox. Um, so let's have a look at what that looks like. Settings, forwarding, enable forwarding, or my email to let's say bad actor at badactor.com. Save that. Uh, sometimes you also see that done as a, a mailbox rule, uh, which will have some suspicious looking characters to hide it and might move items to deleted items, etc. So that's the attack. You can see what it looks like from the attacker side. You can see what it looks like from the user side. Very convincing. Um, and now 
we move over to the detection side of things. So if we go over to um, Sentinel, and we get, I go into my demo Sentinel here, we'll be able to see what did Sentinel on the Defender tools pick up. Um, and you can see that this kind of attack uh, is not quiet. It raises quite a lot of noise. Now, if we go into the incidents, we have uh, a multi-stage incident involving persistence and collection. Um, and this is a correlation of a few different detections. And um, we also caught the creation of the forwarding or redirect rule as malicious. Um, and this threat intelligence session was created by uh, yeah, Azure AD uh, Identity Protection. And it is raised as a high priority incident. Um, so we very quickly able to see that something's gone wrong here. Um, we've also got some other um, detections in Sentinel like this one, rare and potentially high risk operations that are uh, provide useful capabilities to attackers. Again, this is cool um, MFA being registered. And we might see some other detections, which you will see on your screen now. So let's talk about detecting adversary in the middle scenarios. On your screen, you can see a number of detections um, from the various different Microsoft tool sets that are very useful in capturing this type of activity. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about enter ID, identity protection. Um, you will get user risk would increase around these types of attacks. So first of all, we'll see that the, the MFA user that we're targeting this attack again has spiked to high user risk um, in my demo tenant. Um, and there's some detections that are really useful around there. There's threat intelligence sessions, um, unfamiliar signing properties, anomalous tokens. Um, it's a very valuable product for detecting this kind of behavior. Um, in Defend for Cloud Apps, we can see some of the after breach activity. So we'd be able to see suspicious inbox manipulation rules. Obviously, you'll remember the victim's machine was in the UK. The attacker's machine that they imported the session cookies on was in South Africa. If I left it a bit longer, we'd likely see activity from infrequent countries, impossible travel, those types of detections. Um, and we can also see suspicious behavior in SharePoint and in um, their emails. And then we have Defender of Office 365, which contains um, all kinds of phishing related detections. Um, and we also have access to telemetry around URL clicks. Uh, so we can see every link that our users are clicking on, um, which could be really helpful in, in detecting how this has happened or uh, where users have fallen victim to a, to a phishing attack. If you have all parts of the um, the Defender tool sets deployed, so uh, Enter ID, Identity Protection, Defender for Office 365, Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Endpoint, um, and Defender for Identity, there's also uh, automated attack disruption, where if it has very high confidence in this type of attack, the Defender tools can actually run playbooks themselves and go a large way to remediating this attacks almost immediately as they happen. Um, I'm going to share my screen one more time um, and just to confirm you can see this MFA user on my page uh, I mentioned enter ID and things being raised uh, as risky you see my MFA user has high risk level um, from Microsoft enter threat intelligence uh, now the next thing to talk about is how copilot can help so if I run over to copilot here uh, you can see I've run several prompts um, or a prompt book, which is a number of prompts. Um, and I've also used some kind of custom KQL templates, um, which I've um, imported as plugins to Copilot to, um, to help me do some KQL investigation. Um, and we can see how very quickly an analyst could use this to get really, really good insight. Um, so first we want to summarize the incident um, and we can see that there's two alerts. You can see it's called the creation of the forwarding and redirect rule. Um, and you can see that we have this threat intelligence session related to an attempted sign in impacting our user. Um, we can also do some enrichment of any of these entities. And then we have uh, get latest emails by recipient. Um, so we can see what emails they have uh, received recently. They're all the same. But you'll notice a couple of them landed in the inbox and the rest were quarantined. Uh, now, if I was an analyst, that would be a really good sign that something malicious was happening here. 
Um, and we talked about Defender for Office 365 and how we can track all the URL clicks by our recipients. Um, I can again run this through Copilot and it's going to show me the latest URLs clicked by this user in emails. So I have um, obviously the shortened URL and I have the full malicious URL that you'll remember we created on our attacker box. And um, I also have this network message ID here, uh, which is the unique reference for that email. And I can again ask Copilot for more information about that email from the network message ID. Um, and it's going to show us everything relating to that email, including that it's detected as a fish, um, who it went to. Um, assume this went to multiple users, we'd very easily be able to find that out. Um, and we'd be capable of taking remediation steps uh, very quickly. Thank you for watching our session. I hope you found it useful and interesting. If you'd like to find out more about Chorus, then you can visit our website at www.chorus.co.uk. We'll also be at Microsoft Ignite at the Mesa booth on the 16th of November.